to the topic of the discussion and hit the issues you typically find reluctant. Remove the facade to fill the gap with some substance. We undermining problems, expecting to overcome it. Please hold the applause. We doing it for the cause. People follow culture before they follow the laws. We rather face the friction and not attempt it at all. Persistence will find solutions once our contentment dissolves. There's a hard pill to swallow for anyone breathing. Both for folks who stay woke and those who be dreaming. We ain't slaves, yet we still ain't experienced freedom. What we need is the keys to access the kingdom. We're all in this fallen world trying to stay intact. I'm just a beggar pointing you out to where the bread is at. So follow the breadcrumbs like Hansel and Gretel. And thank Yogi Bear and the thought engineer for that. Oh. Man Talk Mondays back once again, ladies and gentlemen. We are in your area. Mr. Ben Sutter, good evening, sir. Lock your doors. We're in your area. Lock your doors. <laughs> Mama, it come there, man. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Man Talk Mondays. I'm Derek, the thought engineer, here with my man. The one, the only, the the myth, the legend, comedian, John Yogi. Man, you too kind. You are too kind, <laughs> sir. You too kind. How y'all doing? Thank y'all. Thank y'all. How y'all doing? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, what's going on, Mr. Misha? Thank you for joining us tonight. We got a hot one for you tonight. We not going to prolong the time. And let me just remind everybody real quick. This is Man Talk Mondays. It's an open forum where we talk about everything from religion to politics to relationships. But of course, we're doing it from a man's perspective. Now keep in mind, this is not just for men. We want everybody to join in, participate in the conversation. Men, women, boys and girls, children of all ages, you're welcome. Just simply go into the comment section, leave your comment, leave your question. We can see this. This is how you talk to us. But you are part of the conversation. So we want to hear from you tonight. Right. So make sure. Y'all get in them comments. Let us know what's on your mind. All right. Don't forget, we have our podcast. You can find us on Apple, Google, Spotify, Spreaker, a lot of different platforms. You can check us out. We upload a new one every week. Make sure you go subscribe to our podcast, like, share, subscribe. We got some great content out there. You can go and catch some, some really good stuff, really good shows. Like blended families, we did the one on blended families that was good. Um, it's got a whole lot of good stuff out there, so make sure you go and check us out. Also, you can watch us live on your TV, you can catch us at BS3 TV on Roku. If you have a Roku device or a Roku TV, you can go to BS3 TV channel and you can watch us live. We also have the past shows, you can go and check us out. All the past content, you can check it out as well. And if you want to watch us on your computer, we have a direct web link, BS3 TV channel on Roku, and the web link is bs3tvlive.com. bs3tvlive.com. Go there, and you can watch us. We want all your attention on Man Talk Mondays. Next, we're going to be in Espanol on BS3 TV. It's gone. <laughs> we try to cover all the bases where y'all won't have no reason to say we wasn't able to watch y'all. We, we right. We're working, working on that. You ready? Exactly. Exactly. We want y'all to make us famous. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, we don't want to waste the time tonight. We want to get right into this. Everybody, we know we talk about relationships a lot, and we know a lot of married people, a lot of married couples, and I've also known quite a few people who got a divorce, threatened divorce, headed that way, or something. We all are involved with somebody, know somebody, or maybe it's us who people have gotten divorce. And since it's so prevalent. We wanted to have just a good, intelligent conversation about it, right? So 
tonight we're talking about before we sign them papers before we sign them papers the good the bad the ugly about divorce right so we had to bring on some people to have this conversation with us so first joining us we have tv personality <laughs> you've probably seen on a commercial near you you've been watching sports <laughs> good friend miss jacquima laurent hello 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 everybody thanks for having me on y'all welcome to the show thanks for joining us tonight and we wanted to bring in somebody with some expertise who has a working knowledge of this whole thing that we call divorce so we called up the one and only attorney sharita blacknell hey everybody thank you for having Morning me tonight. looking forward to it thank you for being here miss miss blacknell attorney is uh, the founder, CEO, operating officer, everything of the Black No Law Firm. She's she's big time. She's doing it big, everybody, right? And uh, so she's our resident expert on this subject tonight. And and we just we gonna hop into this conversation because I know a lot of people are on the edge of their seats want to know what this conversation, how it's gonna go, what we're gonna share about it, and we just want to help some people tonight. Right. We want to help some people. So divorce. I heard that women, you have more women filing for divorce now than men. Is is that is that the case? Is that what we're seeing now? Is it more women filing for divorce than men? Oh, is that for me or Jakeem? Yeah. For either one. Whoever want to jump in there. What's 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 y'all experience? What Sarita, what are you what are you seeing, Sarita? Well, in my practice, it's pretty much 60 40 female to male is what okay. we is what we see in our, in our in my particular practice. Now that could be because I am female, that mm. the other females are seeking me out. So that so that could be right. the reason why we have um you know a 60 40 split on that. But I would probably say that um, our numbers are probably about um, what the norm is for the country. OK, OK. Mr. Kenny said I would answer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so he said we got more women filing. I know that's the truth. I can file, file, uh, jump in with just my beliefs about that based on what what I know, what I've seen, what I've, I've observed is I think that financial positioning is playing a big role in women now making um, decisions for themselves and taking the step to file for divorce more than men. If you think about it, um, so in my day job, I'm in HR. And so we take a look at pay disparities, pay gaps um, all of the time. And so what we do know specifically in African-American uh, females, if you're talking about the, the cents to dollars that African-American women are paid, it's about 68 on average, 68%. Um, I'm sorry, 68 cents on the dollar of what a white male is getting paid. What we also know is that with African-American males, that's 71 cents on the dollar of a white male. So what that tells me is that that gap is very, very small. And so back in the day, mm -hmm. a lot of women were in a position where we were so dependent on that male income, just based on norms um, and dynamics in the household. Um, and so if we made a decision to divorce back in the day, even 10, 15 years ago, we're like, oh, my gosh, I've got these kids or I've got this house to figure out how to pay. I've got to start all over from scratch. And now I believe that we're in a much better position to be able to make those decisions for ourselves because we're in a, a different financial situation. So since y'all don't need us no more, y'all kicking us to the curb. I'm not saying we don't right? need y'all. <laughs> we're just in a position to make those decisions now than we have before. We need y'all. We need y'all brothers. <laughs> that ain't what the stats are showing, though. <laughs> the stats saying something different. We need y'all, but we need y'all to act right. <laughs> You're only going to get one or two things. We're either going to be there or we're going to act right. We ain't going to do both. Oh, come on now. <laughs> we're going to balance, right? Right, pick your poison. Yes, yes. 
So, Sarita, when, when women come to you, what why are they doing this? What are they saying? What do they tell you? Do they give you a reason why they, they're they, filing? They do. I mean, it, in general, it's a lot of different reasons, and it depends on what stage of life they're in, whether or not their children have already left home or whether or not they're still in the mm. thick of, of raising children. Um, sometimes affects the reason why they're getting a divorce. Um, sometimes it's financial reasons. Many times it's infidelity of uh, one of the partners. M most of the time it's, it's the male partner uh, who uh, has committed infidelity. But a lot of times um, people just kind of grow apart as they get older. Um, mm. They start to want different things and they start to become more self-aware and they start to analyze their life and their lives together. And so when they do those things, it, it causes them to grow apart. And, and so we find that in older couples whose children have either left home or, uh, or are about to leave home, that is the reason why they're divorcing most of the time is because they've kind of grown apart. Um, the children are no longer the biggest part of what their life is. And so now they're sitting back and saying, OK, what do I really want to do with my life? And is what I really want to do with my life? Does it include this person that I've been married to all this time? Yeah. Now, when younger people come to us and they want to get divorced, I would say if they're in their early 30s, uh, and they want to get a divorce. Uh, a lot of times it's because they don't feel that the other person is pulling their weight in the relationship and they're tired of carrying most of the weight of the relationship. And that typically happens when people have young children um, in their mm -hmm. home um, because there's a lot going on. As you guys know, when you have young children in your home, we got extracurricular activities to get kids to. We have school to get kids to. There's still cleaning that needs to be done, hair that needs to be washed, dinners that need to be cooked, laundry, you know, groceries, all of the typical things that, yeah. that, that need to be done, plus work, plus work. And then at the end of the day, we still have to be romantic after we've done, you know, all of those, those other things. And so when people, <laughs> when people are in their early thirties, <laughs> when people are in their, their early thirties, they start saying, I'm tired. And I don't know if I can continue this on for another, you know, 30 or 40 years. And so your grandmama did it. Your grandmama did it. Your grandmama did it. I don't want to hear no excuses. Oh, no. If you go for work, you put your mud down, you get in that kitchen, you cook no. some meat, and then wait for me once I get done. Oh, no. I don't want to hear about I don't want to hear it. Listen, and I bet you it's the, it's the, uh, at that particular, it's the men complaining, right? Most no, 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 sir. These millennial women are not our grandmothers, so no. they are not going to do all of those things and be content with it, you know. And so, um, and a lot of times I think it's it's because they really didn't have these real conversations before they actually got married. Like right, these, are, now right. these are conversations that that right. people need to have before they actually get married. Uh, the, what is the division? Uh, going to be of, you know, household responsibilities once we have children. Uh, what, what, are, what are those responsibilities going to be and what are we both expecting, you know, out of this? Uh, we need to be thinking about that before we actually get married and a lot of people don't do that. See, because we such in the hairy try to run to that bed that those conversations get skipped. And then so right. now you're gonna base the relationship on what we do in the bed. Now we start having kids and how we're gonna raise the kids, what are we gonna believe in, all that stuff goes to the side, and you're learning that stuff on the fly. And that kind of stuff kills relationships faster than anything does. And John, John, I don't think it's only the bed. I just think that we fantasize and we're we're groomed to fantasize about this ideal of marriage. So the majority of the time you're sitting here on dates with this person or you're Netflixing, yes, you may be chilling, but you're Netflixing with this person. You're spending time with this person. Y'all are talking about, oh my gosh, when we get married, we're going to run this business and we're going to do this thing. We're going to do that thing. But you don't handle the matters that are truly going to make an impact on that relationship when you get in it. We don't have a conversation with us when we get married. How do you parent? Do you spank your kids? Do you not spank your kids? How do you handle your finances? Right. Do you expect when you get married for us to have a joint account or a separate account? 
And so because we're not on the same page and having those kind of conversations, either through counseling or shoot, they got books that give you questions to ask each other whenever you're dating. If you don't use resources, tool through people or, you know, books and things like that that are available, if your conversation isn't that way and if your conversation isn't in the future and you're just dreaming about the future together, then I think there's a big disconnect. Being, being said, conversations of expectations is a must. I think people are afraid to have those conversations because if we have those conversations, we probably ain't going to end up together. And so my fear of being alone is greater than my fear of having this conversation. So we don't talk. But once you get in there, now it's too late. Yeah. And you don't set the right expect. My, my, who, who are these sorry dudes that these women marrying anyway that ain't chipping out or helping out? I don't I don't know men that don't that do that. You would be so you know surprised. I, I married one. <laughs> so to 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 the point made earlier in the millennials in the 30s, young kids, I was divorced nine years ago. I got divorced when I was 30 years old, in part because of the pressure and that weight, uh Sharita, that you you mentioned. Of feeling like I was wearing the pants and the skirt in the relationship where I was carrying the weight and I was in support fully of um, of my my ex-husband's dreams. Right. And then it led to us not being on the same page. And then there was, of course, the infidelity and then lack of accountability with it, with the infidelity that came along with that. So it was it's absolutely that imbalance makes a huge, huge difference. And there are men out there where that is the case. OK, so if I can ask, if I can ask. Read the comment, and I can ask. Kenny say they tired, but they complain they can't find a good man. Give us a break. We tired too. Oh, tired. So, so there's there's tired. frustration on both sides. <laughs> why do we miss this? What you saying, John? Well, I think one of the reasons why we both tired is because nobody wants to give anything. And you gotta understand about relationship. Relationship is all give. Especially when you're yeah. early, it's all give, it's all compromise. And I think we, and again, I think we kind of going, kind of picking back on what John Kimba said. We're going with a false sense of, of what marriage is supposed to be like. We look at the Cosby's, we see stuff like that, and we're like, huh, that, she not never arguing with him about cooking. They don't never argue about a lot of different stuff that we that we actually have to deal with in the house. So it's foreign to us. But by the time the Cosby's, we picked it up, they were in their forties. Yes. They they were in their forties. They had got past the foolishness, right? They were we should have we should have picked them up in law school and all this. When they was in law school, he was in medical school. They should have picked them up from there, and we would have saw what kind of foolishness went on at the time. Yes, I think you in your thirties are you tired? What what kind of craziness? How, how are you that young and tired already? But D, I want to ask y'all came with this question. So when you were in that situation, but when you find yourself in it. What made you say enough is enough? What made you say, you know what? Mm -hmm. I, I don't want, I can't do this no more. And did you have a divorce goal? Did you go in and say, this is what I want, or I just want to be separated? A divorce goal? What do you yeah, tell we'll, me more we'll about that? We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so, so I'll answer your first question. I'll, I'll answer your first question. Um, so what what was the straw that just yeah, well, I, can't, I, I can't no more now i can't i can't well listen i've got a long story of my marriage and that's gonna be in a book i think i'm a title to why i failed my drug test but um <laughs> but, <laughs> but <laughs> i really think i've been thinking about this book um so it may come out don't steal my title y'all um but really what did it for me was it was a layering of things and then it was not only the infidelity I could have come back from the infidelity. We fall down. We get up. It was the infidelity plus lack of accountability. It was the infidelity plus the gaslighting. It was my fault. Um, and, and it was really the abandonment that came after that that person was found out of their mess. It was like, we're not going to deal with this. We're just going to up and leave the household. So really, I, I did everything that I could. Um, but what I do know for myself is that I wasn't I wasn't created to um, to go through emotional stress um, and and to 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 be <laughs> I just wasn't created for for that level of emotional stress and really um, just that level of emotional abuse is what I mean to say um, because there was a lot of that that was happening um, when there's the gaslighting that happens and a lack of accountability along with the action. Okay, 
now Wesley says when the marriage doesn't work, the blame is always on the man for some odd reason. Wesley, I'll put it like this, man. We you ever we notice the person that gets react reacts always is the one to get caught. Not the person that commits the offense, the one that reacts. We watch sports. We watch sports. The person who gets the penalty typically isn't the person who initiated it. It's typically the person that reacted to what the other person did. Now, I know this ain't popular, because but, but I don't think women pay attention to what they do to guys. I don't think they pay attention. And by the time a guy, because we, we, we are holding in, we won't say nothing, and then all of a sudden, we start moving different and acting different. Now, if a guy just no good, he no good. But you got good guys that start going this way, and you gotta be you gotta be careful about it. She said, "Please clarify." You talking about me? Clarify. I I just know that you have good guys who start off good, and yeah. things go bad. But I think that there is. I think. When relationships goes bad, there is a lack of communication. Yes, you mentioned that. He's holding things inside. But then somewhere along the, the way, we lose that vulnerability that we have at the <laughs> Derek, watch so uh <laughs> that vulnerability that we have when we first are starting off in our relationship. Like somewhere along the way, we just stop disclosing. And maybe that's because of how she reacted that one time I really shared my heart. And yes, we do have to be accountable and responsible for how we respond to whatever our husband or our spouse is bringing to us. But I think that somewhere along the way, there's a lack of transparency and communication. Uh, if I could just jump in right here, the voice goes, because I'm curious to hear what the, what uh, Sharita is thinking about yeah. the conversation. Because I know she's sitting there very calm and collected saying, I know in her head she said, oh, oh, okay, what y'all said, that ain't how it is. I'm curious to see and to hear what she thinks about the conversation. Let me say this real quick because we had kind of had a conversation with Sharita before, and when she said this, it blew my mind. So I want her to talk about the divorce goals. What is that about? So divorce goals is something that we, when people come to us, I let them tell me what their story is, the reason why they're talking to me, the reason why they're considering, you know, getting a divorce or whatever. I make sure that they are sure that they want to go forward with their, their divorce. And if they tell me they are ready and they've thought about it and they've gone through all, you know, the, the thinking about it and, and grieving and all of that stuff, and they're ready to move forward. So the next question I ask them is what is their goal for their divorce? So in other words, we have to begin with the end in mind. When this divorce is over with, what do you want your life to look like? So I ask them, what is what is your goal for this for, for this divorce? How much thought have you put into what your goal is? And what are you willing to do to make sure that that goal happens? And so many times people, when they come to us, they haven't even thought that far. They haven't even mm -hmm. thought about what their goal is uh, in their divorce. They haven't put any thought into it. They don't know what they are willing willing to do. All they know is that they're that that they want to be divorced. When you yes, say, what are you willing to do to make that happen? What exactly do that mean? <laughs> I know what it sounds like. What are you willing to give up is what it sounds like. Tell well, go ahead. Well, it means um, different things depending upon which aspect of their divorce we're talking about. So for instance, I'll give you an example. Sometimes people come to us and they say, uh, I want one week on and one week off of visitation with my children. It's usually the male. It's usually the husband who comes in and says, look, I don't want to be a weekend dad. I want to have one week with my children and I want them to go to their mom's house the next week. So I say, OK, great. That's a, that, that's a great goal for you to have. I, so I so I say, but where are you where are you currently living? They may say, oh, well, I live in Carrollton. And I said, well, where are the children living with the mother? Oh, the mother's living in Mesquite. So now we have to think about how are the children on your week going to get from Mesquite mm. to Carrollton Monday through mm. Saturday to school, to extracurricular activities? How are you going to get them there? You know, during your during your during your time, if they're if they are in school in Mesquite. 
and you live in Carrollton, how are you going to get from how are you going to get them from Carrollton in the mornings all the way to Mesquite to get to school in the morning or whatever their extracurricular activity? So that's what I mean by what are you what are mm. you really what are you willing to do? Are you willing to move closer to where the children are? Mm -hmm. Are you willing to say that the children are going to be here one week and there one week as long as we're living within a certain geographic area? What exactly are you willing to do to make that happen? Or let's say that I have a the wife comes to me and she says, I want to keep the house. My goal is that I want, want to, to keep this house. OK, you want to keep the house. So what are you willing to do in order to be able to keep the house? Mm -hmm. is, your, is your credit good enough for you to refinance the house in your own name? Mm -hmm. Are you able to refinance the house using your own income? Mm -hmm. um, are, you, are you able to pay the mortgage on the house and all the other things that come along with the mortgage mm -hmm. if, if, if you want to keep the house? So that's what I mean by it's one thing for you to have these goals, but the logistics of the goals need to be thought out and you need to be able to articulate what are you willing to do in order to make that goal happen. So, Dr. Selena says, what happens when someone's goals do not align with what you witnessed in the past with different couples? Well, when you say when their goals don't, al don't align, typically their goals are not going to align. Mm. Typically, but that's the reason why why they are getting a divorce in the first place. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> goals are, are not aligned. So what happens when their goals aren't aligned? We start out from a position of trying to get couples to come to some kind of an agreement about the areas of their lives that are going to overlap once the divorce happens. Because certain aspects of their lives, if they have children, are going to overlap. So we try to get them to come to some kind of an agreement about what are you guys going to do about these aspects that overlap with one another. If we're unable to get them to come to an agreement, then we have to go to we have to end up going to court and letting the judge make a decision on what should happen with that person's goal. Right. Because and that's what the judges get paid to do is to settle those disputes. They're the umpires. They call the balls, they call the strikes, they get to, to try and decide, OK, you have this goal and you have this goal. And the judge is saying, well, my goal is to make sure <laughs> that you're doing what's in the best interest of the, of the child in, in, this, yeah. in this situation. That's what the yeah. judge's goal is. Mm -hmm. The judge is going to try to is going to try to put all of those things together after hearing everything to make sure that the children are taken care of, because the judge doesn't care about the grown people. The judge cares mm -hmm. about children that are uh that are involved in the case so Mon yeah monique says that's what i was going to ask will they align mm -hmm. now now here's the funny thing you couldn't compromise so you get divorced and you end yeah, up yeah. Have to compromise yes. <laughs> you, yes. you're forced to compromise now well, well with all of the logistics and everything now you force the compromise again well, some people are willing to do that, that level of compromise because it doesn't encompass all areas of their lives. They're only compromising on the things that that, that the are, where, they're, where they're overlapping. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, if two people are getting the divorce and they don't have any children together and all they have is property. Well, that's a simple one for us to do. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just come in. This is what the property is. We put it on an inventory and appraisal spreadsheet. You want this. He you know, he wants that. And I mean, that that one is, is easy for us to do. But when people have children together, that's where the problem comes in, because now we're, we have two separate households, but we have one set of children. So we have to try and figure out how are we going to compromise to co-parent for these children? Not what the, what do I want as the wife as the the former wife or what do I want as the former husband? What are we going to do? to make sure that these children's lives are as, as you know comfortable and as normal as we can make them in the new normal. Because it's never going to be the same as it was, of course, mm -hmm. when, when the parents were living together. So so right. that we're, so we now have to figure out what are we going to, going to do in the new normal, right? And so we mm -hmm. that, that's easy depending upon the personalities of the people involved. If the people involved have pretty much said, we understand that we're no longer going to be together as a couple, but we have to figure out how we're going to get these children back and forth to basketball practice every week. 
and to school and homework and tutoring and all of that. Some couples are able, are emotionally strong enough to be able to do that, to sit down and come to a compromise as it relates to their children. So even though their relationship didn't work out, I, I've had women come to me and say, oh, he's a great dad. No question about it. He's a great dad, but as, as a husband, we're not going to be able to make it, but, but, but he, is, he is a great dad. And so they are able to, to compromise when it comes to the children. Now, sometimes people come to us and they're very emotional. Their, their, their relationship is very, there's a lot of conflict uh, involved in their relationship and they will never be able to agree on anything. I don't care how small a yeah. thing that it is. They will never be able to agree on anything and in those cases, then we just have to get the court involved in every aspect of their divorce. Sometimes you you don't ever want to say if y'all if I can just get y'all to sit down somewhere and be quiet, we can get this done. Would y'all stop acting like kids? You don't ever want to say nothing like that. You just be professional and be like, <laughs> "We're working out, guys. We're working out." You. Well, you <laughs> yes, I try to be as pro as professional as I possibly can. I try to educate my clients about. Um, you know, what the situation is, what's likely to happen, you know, in that situation. And a lot of times I just try to explain to them, like, if this issue is not really that important to you, um, let's compromise on, on, you know, on that issue, because what you're doing is you're costing yourself more money uh, in attorney's fees and expenses to argue about things that you really don't care about in the first place. I think Monique agrees with you. She said you are absolutely right. It will never be the same. So I want to, I want to, so Jaquima, is anything that Sarita is saying, is it resonating with you? Oh, all? absolutely. Absolutely. Um, for me, for me, it's, it's easier said than actually done because when you're going through, like you want to be calm, you want to make all of the right decisions for your children. Let me just say this. Most people want to be calm. Most people, people want to make the right decisions by their kids. Right. But your emotions are high. The circumstances that are leading up to divorce are not pretty circumstances. You're making a decision. You're dealing with the um, the shame of failure. You're, you're processing and grieving in a way. Um, and then now you have to make big decisions that are going to impact especially if you have children going to impact their lives. And so, you know, hurt people ended up end up hurting people. Right. And mm -hmm. so that's where a lot of the conflict comes in. It's just like, well, he cheated on me, so I'm not going to let him see my kid. And I'm going to fight him on this little thing. And, you know, he's going to be a weekend dad because he wasn't there for me. And, and there's a lot of women and men, depending on whatever, whoever was at fault, which I think that there, everyone has a part to play. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's nobody perfect because there's no perfect relationship because they're imperfect people. Right. And so um, but we tend to try to blame so that we can be the person that's the bigger person in all of this. Um, but needless to say, emotions are really high. I know me personally, um, it was difficult. It was more difficult at the beginning when, we're, when we were going through this settling process of trying to figure out, OK, so who's going to have uh, my daughter and, you know, how many days and what does this mean? And, and where are you going to live? And and going through all of those nuances and the logistics that Sharita was talking about, that's difficult um, because you're still the, the undercurrent is that hurt and that pain. And so anything that we don't agree on is amplified. Now it's no, mm. you are on Friday through Sunday. No, I'm going to get her on Thursday. <laughs> Thursday through wow. Sunday. Before so it turns into this, and Sharia's been shaking her head. She's like, yeah, I've seen this nitpicking that just starts to happen because you're speaking from this really deep place of pain. And so at the beginning, it's like that. And the quicker you work yourself uh, through that, um, the better. So, I'm, so Sharita, so tell me this. How many times have you had somebody come in and say, I want a divorce? And then they say, wait a minute. No, never mind. I want a divorce. No, no, wait a minute. <laughs> I want a divorce. Uh-uh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second. Wait, wait, wait. Listen, this is the last time I want a divorce. No, nah, I think I'm going to stay. Because you know, before the actual divorce happens, we wrestle with that a lot of times. This is what I'm hearing. That we wrestle with it a lot before we actually do it. So at what point do you say, hey, listen, don't you come back in here unless you say to do something that you come back in here. <laughs> put, put, put her picture on the door and don't let her in here no more until she's ready to do something. Has that ever happened to you? Oh, yes. A few times a year, we'll, we'll actually have people that will come in 
We've actually filed the divorce paperwork, served their spouse with the divorce paperwork. And then they oh, come wow. back a few months later and say, you know what? Let's, let's just go ahead and put that on ice because we've decided that we're going to try mm-hmm. to, to, to reconcile this situation. Now, we also have people, and this is one of the things that I was telling John one day when we were talking, people a lot of times really think about the divorce before they come to us. Like by the time they come to us, Mm. they have thought about it and they have tried and they have thought about it and they have tried for months before they actually come to us. And then even when once they do come to us and do an initial consultation with us, it may be several months before they even contact me again to say that they're ready to move forward. I mean, on average, uh, we have people that contact us for a consultation. Sometimes it might be six months before they come back to us and say, okay, now I'm ready because they talk to us. We, you know, tell them what the law says about their particular situation. They go back, they try to reconcile, they try to work it out. And then they come back about six months later and they're like, we just, we just couldn't do it. So now, um, they're ready to move forward. And let me just say this, divorce does not have to be all uh, a bad thing because a lot of times we get people that contact me. I stay in contact with my old clients. I've been doing this since 2003 and I have clients that contact me by text message or they email me or they will call me to give me their testimony about how they and their ex-spouse how their relationship has evolved and how they are now able to talk to one another and they're now getting along. So I get those kind of uh, messages, you know, several times a year from, from old clients saying we, I mean, th- th- that divorce was probably the best I, thing that happened to us. I, I was, I was, I thought maybe you was keeping in touch for repeat business. That's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, you probably going to need me again. So <laughs> I keep in touch with them. You know, they tell me, you know, what's going on with their children mm-hmm. and, you know, their relation, you know, their relationship with their ex-spouse. Anybody that would get back married to anybody that would say, girl, you know what? Once I separated from him or her, she started acting like she got some sense. I think I'm going to get back with them. That's probably only happened to me a couple of times. Like I, mm. it really has only happened to me a couple of times in, in my career. That and when they tell you that, what you say, oh, girl, girl, do you know no. how y'all fought before? Do you remember? <laughs> I I just tell them that tell them that I'm glad that they found each other again. <laughs> but what you thinking to yourself though? You might tell them that, but what was running through your mind? No, I just I, I I mean I just I mean people think that because I'm a divorce attorney that I want people to be divorced. I don't. I mean people <laughs> like a used myself. So, no, yeah, like no. uh Evelyn Chaser. Like yeah, Evelyn I mean, Chaser. Hey, everybody everybody in the family reunion on their best behavior because she look at them like this. No, are they gonna divorce over there? <laughs> Now, I always ask people when they come to me, like, are you sure this is what you want to do? Have you guys been to counseling? Have you, you know, have you tried this? Have you tried that? Like I make suggestions to them. And like I said, by the time they come to me, they have really thought about it and agonized. I mean, males and females, they have really agonized about, you know, uh, whether or not they really want to get a divorce. Girl, I just got cheated on. You better go to Black and All Life. Or no. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> so, so I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to go back to something real quick because when you talk about divorce goals, when when people start defining what the win is mm-hmm. somebody comes in they like i want them to hurt i don't want them to have nothing yeah. i want to get everything out of them yeah. how how ugly how how much of the the hidden stuff comes out in the effort for people to win how public do they put the mess mm-hmm. in order to win uh, yeah i mean they'll 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 try to get 
real, you know, dirty and down in the mud and stuff like that. But to be honest with you, I try to discourage people from doing that because mm -hmm. I just let them know, like, at the end of the day, the two of you guys are going to be divorced. Like, y'all have already made that decision that y'all aren't going to be together. So let's just deal with the things that we have to deal with in order to make that happen for mm -hmm. you so that you can move forward with your life. Uh, faster. You want to move forward with your life sooner rather than, you know, rather than later. And so uh, when you get down in the dirt and you, you know, do all of those things, it's not really serving anybody. It's not mm -hmm. serving anybody. It's not really mm -hmm. serving the purpose that they think that it's serving. It's just prolonging something that's inevitable. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Tramisha says my parents divorced when I was seven, got back together when I was 14 and still together. And she says she's 38. So See? I guess it does work out sometimes when people yeah. get back together. My parents divorced, got back together, and divorced again. <laughs> it was a good one. We got it right the first time. I was just saying that ground. We got it right the first time. We, we <laughs> yeah. wow. I don't know. I, I just, because when you look at the whole mess of it it just seems messy and i mean it's i guess it's kind of good to to hear that you know it doesn't have to get like that but from from the things that i've seen i've seen it get real and maybe that doesn't hit the courts maybe it just hit if you know them they start telling all of the business cuz i noticed something people seem to campaign before they get divorced they campaign they're trying to turn people in their favor so they oh, start okay. campaigning God, they God. start telling oh well you don't know what this person did you don't and they start and they start going around and purposely aiming for particular people to isolate and like they campaign yeah because I think people pay more attention to a lot of times to what other people are going to think about me oh, yeah, absolutely Mm -hmm. in this yeah. you know and nobody wants to be the villain everybody's always the hero or the victim nobody mm -hmm. wants to be the villain mm -hmm. so in, in order not to pass on the villain perception i got a campaign and make myself either the victim or the hero typically it's going to be the victim though mm -hmm. but but okay so uh uh Sharita, who wins in divorce who wins because people are campaigning for something Everybody's trying to get a win, trying try to see who's going to win in the divorce. Who actually wins in divorce? I, I always say that there really is no winner, right? Like nobody really wins. Like who wants their family like to be torn apart? Like nobody really wants that. And so what we try to do is try to get people and like in the beginning of a divorce, everything is really heated. Like everybody is real, real, real heated and emotional we try to help people get past that point so we can get down to the business of getting the divorce, you know, done and, and taken care of so that they can move forward with their life. But there really is no, no winner, you know, because everybody's going to have to compromise something. Nobody, nobody in a divorce is going to get every single thing that they want. Like no, nobody is. Um, and so um, everybody's going to have to compromise, right? Because you're taking, what was one life that you guys were sharing together and now we have to separate those those lives and so there's got to be compromise on both sides yeah it's an l everywhere around mm -hmm. your kids lose you lose your 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 spouse loses um you you just have to take the l there's really not a there's not a win in it i mean if you you want to say some kind of win is what you hopefully have walked away and learned um, about yourself, what you need to do differently um, in next relationships. Um, learn learn how people are in, unfortunately, some cases and how the ugly can come out of people um, that you just don't expect to come out of them, but you really just, to, to, I, you don't win. In the comments, Charlene Berry says, she agrees, nobody wins. No. She agrees. Can Tina Turner Tina won. <laughs> Tina Turner won. <laughs> Sometimes it's a win. <laughs> yeah. Monique says no, no one. I always say most people do mm -hmm. not marry just to divorce. Wesley says some people shouldn't have gotten married in the first place, which is true. Queen Three and King says 
they think they win, but it's only in the court of public opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, the court of public opinion, which has recently become more important than even the legal courts to most people. It's how you're perceived mm -hmm. in the whole deal, which is why I say people, they'll cut their campaign. They see themselves going that way. They start campaigning. I can kind of see it when they start angling. Yeah, I start seeing the campaign. Now, uh, uh, Sharita, you may not know the answers, but I'm gonna ask: okay. Who gets the friends in the divorce? Oh, do she have to stop? Funny. Do she have to stop being? I don't want her talking to my friends no more, and she don't <laughs> want me talking to her. Is that because 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 people have to make a decision? On whether or not they're gonna still be cool with you because you're not with their friends. So who actually who get the friends? Now I think I saw that y'all did a, a show on this once before in the past. We did. <laughs> on, this same, on this same question. <laughs> I see uh -huh. you, you remember something I didn't remember. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did. So I'm, so I'm going to say who gets to keep the friends is the person who brought the friend in in Come the on. first place. Yeah. So whoever whoever brought that friend gets Usually, it's the same. Huh? What? But what if your friend was wrong? <laughs> what they, if you like the part other person? Yeah. Your friend, you you realize your friend was a fool. Why don't you let friend. the friend choose? Yeah. Because well, I've seen I've seen it happen before, uh, where there was everybody knew the husband through the wife, but once everybody got to know the husband. Everybody tend to like him a lot more than they did her. So, that's normally how it is. That's normally how it is. The <laughs> judge said that's normally how it is. So but when it all fell apart, okay, John. everybody's still cool with him, but the wife but I, I, would say like, her real, I would say her real friend stuck with her. Yeah. Her real friend stuck with her, even if she was wrong. Or his real friend stuck with him, even if he was wrong. <laughs> like, that's usually, okay. usually the way that it works. Hmm. Like your friends may tell you like you were wrong in that situation, but they're not gonna like friend. just switch mm -hmm. sides to be yeah. that mm -hmm. other person's friend. Hmm. I, I think they do if you don't listen to them. I'm still stuck on the more importantly. V, I'm stuck on the I think y'all had a show on this last time that I see. I'm stuck yeah. on that right there. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said that I like it. She talked it. Okay, okay, because I barely remember that show. I remember that was that. pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It's 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 ugly all around, but I think the the kids. How how do you, how have you seen this thing affect the kids? Because you got two grown people. Like I say, the judge don't care nothing about the grown people, but it's the kids. How how are the kids really impacted in this whole thing that you've seen? Either I one of y'all. Yeah. It, it the the children are 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 really really affected by it right because they've gone from having both of their parents under the same roof with them you know every night to now you know being under the roof with one parent more so than the other parent and every aspect of their life now is different right because you know everything is different. Uh, in a situation where, let's say you have a situation where the where there is a one week on and one week off visitation schedule. Well, who who wants to, even as an adult, would you want to be one week you're staying in this Airbnb yeah. and then the next week you're staying in this Airbnb and then the next week you're back at the yeah. other Airbnb yeah. and then the next week you're yeah. back at the other Airbnb. Now, now, now just think as an adult, you wouldn't want to do that. Dragging your luggage Packing. back and forth from, you know, from one place, you know, to the next. You know, dragging back and forth homework from you know from one place to the next, like that really has a big effect on on children, especially if they're not mature enough um, to be able to understand you know what's happening. If they're young children, they really don't understand like why am I over here one week and the next week I'm over here. And then there's also now we have two different sets of rules at one house versus yeah. the other house, right? Mm -hmm. And so. Um, a lot of the conflict that, that that spouses have when they were living together were related to raising the children and their disagreements about raising the children. So now that the households have been separated, yeah. the, wife now, the wife now says, or mom now says, well, now that, that he's gone, now I can have my rules for the children. 
And then dad is saying, well, now mm. that she's gone, I can have my rules for uh, my, my rules for the children. And let's not even talk about if the parents have disagreements about religion, because now, yeah. now yeah. Um, yeah. Disagreements yeah. About religion and the children may end up being in two different, um, mm. you know, religious situations. Yeah. So, and that's before adding step parents. Oh, yeah. Before yeah. Adding, oh. and, and step siblings. Oh, and step siblings. Oh, oh. Oh yeah. So Thank there's a lot. Oh yeah. There's a there is a lot of things that that affect the children, and I mean, and sometimes you'll you'll have the parent that only gets the kids on the weekends, and so they're thinking, well, I only get my kids on the weekends, so I'm not going to do all this disciplining and homework and all this stuff on my weekend. So now you have one parent that's the fun parent. And the mm. other parent is the disciplinary parent, right? Because if you only get your children on the weekend, you don't want to be, you know, going through all that arguing with them about um, what time they're going to bed and not having screen time and, and doing homework and projects and all that kind of stuff because you only get to see them a couple of weekends out of the month. Yeah. So the children, the children are, are, are affected uh, big time. And if you have two parents that cannot get on the same page about anything, it is very, 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 uh, and they don't support each other's uh, uh, parenting choices. Mm -hmm. It's a very tough situation. Sharita, that happened, that exact situation happened to me. So I had a three weeks on, one week off when my daughter was younger. So I had her the majority of the month and he had her for one week. And that one week, she was at Six Flags. She was at Hurricane Harbor. Yeah. On yeah. Target shopping sprees, <laughs> whatever you want, she come back, hair dudes, extra beads in her hair. I'm like, well, how do you get extra? So, and then she come back to me, and I'm just like, no, you need to clean your room, and you need to do this, and I'm being more of a disciplinarian. Mm -hmm. And she's looking at me like, but that it's that a whole transition that we, her, and I had to go through whenever in, in readjusting to her being at, at my house because she go to what seemed like grandparents' house, but it was her dad. Mm, you know, yeah. Spoiled and all of the things. Um and then I'd have to to figure out how to to work through that with her and, and establish new norms. And by the time three weeks went by, she'd go right back and it was just this whole cycle over and over. Mm -hmm. over, and over. Char Charlene said yes, my son took it really hard. He was 15 at the time. And you know I've heard grown people whose parents got divorced when they was grown. It still hits them hard. Let me get Chauncey. Chauncey said, parents divorced when I was six. Found that, that, found that out at the age of 35. Learned of the reason at 42. Never affected me physically or behaviorally, more so mentally. Took those lessons and now try to right the wrongs of the past through my own. Many marriages have good potential to salvaged, but because of self, they go astray. Mm -hmm. Self will always be the biggest common denominator. I like what Chauncey said. He's right. He's absolutely right. So would it be a good idea to well, because my uh my mom and dad divorced when we were five. And back then the divorce was my daddy said I'm gonna go to the store and get some cigarettes and then I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> explains a lot, John. <laughs> But but so so and, and still cry every time you see a pack of cool. <laughs> I'm sitting up right now to my <laughs> but I, but I'm simply saying I, I don't think that parent well I don't want I don't want to say that because that may not be true. But I don't I don't think that we really understand the magnitude of of kids that's coming up one way and we completely change how they do midstream because we were five and I know my brothers we we well into our forties. 50s and and they still kind of struggle with that because i think they never you know we don't really talk about it like we should but that's 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 because again and that's why the judge is like he is because it's not about you it's not about you at all and we make we try to make divorce all about us but these days we have more tools to help children a little bit more to uh to deal with these things and uh, to help the parents to learn how to uh, how to co-parent. They have a lot of co-parenting classes. There's family therapy. There's therapy for the children. So it's all in how the parents uh, deal with it. Um, they, it. You know, 
because it's more detrimental to the children to have you guys staying together or to have the couple staying together and just and arguing they, and fussing and yes, fighting yes, and doing yes. all that all you know all mm -hmm. the time. That's detrimental mm -hmm. to the to the children as well. But if the parents handle it correctly and use the tools that are available to them, then you know they can kind of help the children along. Um, so that it won't be as bad. I'm not going to say it's not going to have any effect on them because it definitely is going to have an effect on them. But I think it's a worse effect on them when they see, you know, their parents just arguing and fussing and fighting all the time and never um, on the same page about anything. Yeah, because the kids be like, y'all need to get a divorce. Oh yeah, I've heard I've heard people say that, and they use that excuse. Well, we were better apart because when we were together, all we did was fight because y'all don't want to act right. <laughs> it's like people don't ever get in their mind. You know what? Maybe I should act right, and then this will change the situation. But it it typically comes down to somebody just isn't going to do what they're supposed to do. Let somebody will dig their heels in the ground. And say, I'm not going to change. I'm not going to compromise. And this is what you got to deal with. And now people's like, well, we got to we got to go our separate ways. And that's not mature. When you talk about marriage, marriage isn't a it's all about coming together and figuring out where, where the compromises are. Mm -hmm. And people, anytime you dig your heels in the ground, I think people don't get behind. Why are you digging your heels in the ground so bad? Because it's typically something behind that that people are not exploring. But all we well, we were we were doing up a fighting and it was bad for the kids. It was bad for the kids that y'all wouldn't grow up and act right. <laughs> I hate when people use that excuse. I'm like, come on, really? Well, you know, it's funny because most of the time we talk to divorced people, they always look back and say what they could have did better. To, mm -hmm. to, a, to a person, most people say, well, you know. And I was acting kind of crazy. Then. Or somebody said somebody has remorse about it, and I'm just curious if we can get right quick. Who had? Does anybody out there have divorce remorse questions? Anybody? Right quick. We we run. We getting a long time before we get to. But I'm just curious because most people that are divorced, well, if you ask them, they'll say, "Well, you know, well, it was this, and I could have did more of that, or I could have did more of this." Uh, Jakima. Yeah. Divorce remorse question. Divorce remorse for you. Yeah, I think it goes back to dating. Um, so sometimes we see mm -hmm. God sends us red flags and we say, oh, that looks like a carnival. No, it's not a carnival. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Those are red flags. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fun there. <laughs> Good things aren't there. So I think the discretion, using discretion, paying attention to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you um, and, and acting on those things, acting on what is revealed to you is so important. Hmm. 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 Okay. It's well, uh, Charlene <laughs> said, no, she was good. And she, <laughs> she's saying that because I believe she told us last week her husband was running through the church and he was a pastor. So, <laughs> hey, so it's good when you know a little bit about people. You can say, oh, that's why she said that. So, so she said she was good, but, um, his prayer schedule was packed. <laughs> <laughs> Monique, yes, paying attention early. And I, I think this goes into, I don't think, I think people today, are they don't know how to compromise or communicate. Because most kids that I've seen that are being raised today, nobody teaches them compromise. Everybody caters to them. So they never learn how to, I have to pull back so somebody else can, can have. Well, you, you don't learn that growing up. So now it, I got to have, and if I can't have, can't nobody have. Everybody get a trophy. Get this, the, right. You get in this and go, everybody, you know what I'm saying? You marry this. And that's already a problem. Yep. I could go on. Final thoughts, ladies and gentlemen. Final thoughts. Let's go with Miss Jakima. Uh, final thoughts. Um, like I said, check for those early flags. Guard your heart when you're dating. Um, and when you are married, fight for um for the marriage and um check yourself, hold yourself accountable, uh, because both of you play a role um in the outcome. Those are my final thoughts. <laughs> My final thoughts are that when you get a divorce, 
it is going to affect every aspect of your life. So be prepared for the new normal. Try to get through it as, as fast as you can. Compromise as much as you can. And that will help you to get to your new normal faster. Hmm. My And those are my final thoughts. My final thoughts are, <clears throat> my final thoughts for this evening are, you know, I think that the dating part is supposed to be, I think we make that the honeymoon part, and then we get to the rest of the marriage and everything else. But we have to start taking the dating aspect of it more serious because what you don't say today may be said in divorce later. We really have to take this more serious because the guy that you with or the girl that you dated is going to parent your kids. And so we need to start asking more questions. We need to start being more thorough while we're dating, while we're still beginning to know each other. I think I don't want to put too much pressure on dating, but it's very serious because this could affect, this will probably affect the rest of your life. That's my final thought. When you think about if you were going to take a trip in your car, you're going on a long trip, you want your car to be in optimal shape. Well, let's say you blow out a tire and now you got to ride on a donut. Typically, you go you go get that tire service because that donut has limits and it will not run as well as the original tire. When we talk about divorce, we're taking families on a trip with a donut. You may or may not get there. And if you get there, there's limits to what you can actually do. Are you cool with those limits? God designed this thing one way. He designed it to work the way he designed it. But if we start doing our own thing with it, we're trying to run it with parts that don't work for what God designed it for. So we can't expect it to work. When it all comes down to it, at some point, we just got to do it the way God said do it. His way brings success. Our way, we don't know what we're going to get. And now society has to suffer because everybody wants to do their own thing and have things their own way. The thing about marriage, coming to, together as one, you're trying to blend a value system and come with, with a common value system. But people fight because of their values. And if you've never learned how to compromise with anybody at any time, Chances are you're going to get into this thing and want it your way and it's not going to happen. So you're going to end up divorced. A lot of stuff can be avoided if we do it right on the front end. And that starts with just doing it God's way from the beginning. Try it. I think you'll find I'm right. And that's my final thoughts for this week. Yeah. Wow. Well, we, we want to thank yes. our esteemed guest, Miss Jakima, for your input. Great, great input tonight. And Miss Sarita laying, I mean, just laying it all out there. You gave us some great information. And I we hope it helps somebody to consider if you are headed down that road, really consider, really consider what what's waiting on you <laughs> when you go down that road. Make wise decisions on the front end, you know what I'm saying? It's easier to make it's easier to break up on the front end than it is on the back. It's much easier oh, when yeah. you dating to break up than when you married. You don't lose. Yeah, that's what my father in law say all the time. The best time to get divorced is before you get married. So <laughs> Derek is so hopeful. I, <laughs> so, you know, I've been doing this since 2003. You sound so hopeful. <laughs> Listen, I just, if people just people won't do right, I understand. I understand. <laughs> if they did, we'd be in a different place in this world. I know. But yeah, it was great. If you are going down that road, holla at, holla at Miss Sharita. <laughs> holla at Sharita. <laughs> call him. <laughs> if you're gonna do it anyway, might as well get a good lawyer. So, yeah. <laughs> so real quick before before we go, um, Sarita, if you let them know, just let them know your website, how to find you, information. 
Okay. We're on all the social media platforms, um, pretty much except Instagram. So we're on LinkedIn, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, but the best place to find us is on our website at theblacknallfirm.com or www.blacknallfirm.com. We have a very informative website that has so much free information uh, on there. We have about a hundred videos with frequently asked questions on there. We have our minimum fees listed on there. We have uh, probably 200 blog posts written on that website. So if you just have questions and you want to know what your rights are, check out that website. And we also offer free consultations. Wow. That's huge. Yeah, it is. Mr. Akima, you got any social media that you want people to- buy my book, on? Why I Failed My Drug Test, y'all coming. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that's, that's real. If you go write the book, we will put it out there. Yeah, I'll write a book. Y'all get all the juice. Um, but no, um, I just appreciate y'all allowing me to be on. So happy to be here today. My oh, man, uh, you can find me at all. Uh, I'm going to write her book with her. It's going to be Why She Failed Her Drug Test too. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> why, she, why she failed her second drug test? Why I failed my drug test again? Dot 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 again. <laughs> Good. We're, we're here every Monday night for Central Time, seven o'clock Central. Find me on all social media platforms, John Yogi. Uh, yeah, John Yogi, and uh, my man Derek. Tell us about yourself. You can catch me Overcomers of Power Ministries. We're on every Sunday, at ten a.m. On the BS3 TV channel on Roku, also on Facebook and YouTube. And also, guess it's Monday, Monday nights, Man Talk Mondays, 7 p.m. Central. We want to thank everybody for joining us, everybody that joined us in the comments. Thank you for your comments, your questions, and everything. We always love y'all. We appreciate y'all. We're going to catch y'all next week. Peace out. <laughs>